Joining us in the studio for this week's Your Health segment is Dr. Maria Baer, professor of medicine at the University of Maryland School of Medicine and director of hematologic malignancies at the University of Maryland's Marlene and Stuart Greenbaum Cancer Center. Doctor, thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me. We want to focus on leukemia. So let's start with what it is and, and how patients find out that they have it. Sure. So the word leukemia literally means too many white cells in the blood, um, but some leukemias do have too many white cells in the blood, others have too few white cells in the blood. It's actually a cancer of the bone marrow. So the bone marrow is the spongy substance inside the bones where the blood cells are made. And they're um, blood cell precursor cells and they can suffer damage to DNA and become cancerous. And if that's not repaired, you have a cancer. How, how does someone come to realize that, that they have it? Sure. So one of a couple of different ways. Sometimes it's a routine checkup and the blood counts aren't quite right. And then there's further investigation and it turns out that there's a, a leukemia or another bone marrow disease. Sometimes people don't feel well, um, in particular with acute leukemia. Um, they cannot feel well, and that can range from just, oh, something's not quite right, to really being acutely ill and having it really present as a medical emergency. Talk, if you would, about the, the range of leukemias. Sure. Are there fast-growing versus very slow uh, uh, cancers? Yeah, or there's acute versus chronic. So in acute leukemia, um, you have an overproduction of young white blood cells and an underproduction of mature cells. So patients don't uh, have enough mature red cells, white cells, platelets, which are the normal kinds of blood cells. And um, they are ill, um, ranging from not feeling quite right to, to really being very acutely ill with an infection or uh, severe anemia or bleeding or. Uh, with chronic leukemia, it is more of a slow process, um, often with too many white blood cells, but they're mature white blood cells, and, and often uh, patients are not that sick. It may be an inc incidental pickup, or they may be mildly unwell. What's happening with, with therapy for this? I mean, how much change has there been in the field over, over say, the last decade? Sure. There's been a lot of change. Um, in different kinds of change in, in different diseases. With the chronic leukemias, the um, really striking change is chronic myelogenous leukemia, where um, used to be incurable except with a bone marrow transplant. Um, and about um, 12, 13 years ago, um, actually targeted therapy was developed. So the kind of poster child of targeted therapy is a drug called Gleevec that inhibits signaling, abnormal signaling in chronic myelogenous leukemia cells. And patients just simply take a pill and most of them do really well. They need to be monitored carefully and sometimes the pill needs to be switched to a different pill, but it's, it's just night and day in terms of the treatment and in terms of the outcomes. So that's the kind of the poster child that's then. Um, so, so does that must make you uh, very optimistic about, about what the next generation of therapies is going to be? Absolutely. Um, so uh, there are different signaling inhibitors like Gleevec. Um, there are different antibodies, immune therapies. Um, it is really exciting. There are tremendous uh, developments and progress and um, based on really exciting science and scientific discoveries, but then taking those to new drugs and to clinical trials. What's known about the cause? I think you, you said earlier there can be just a mutation. Yeah. Um, so um, we know more and more about the mutations that occur and the, the chromosome changes and the molecular mutations that occur. Um, and increasingly, those can then give us targeted treatments. Uh, we know less about why certain people develop those abnormalities. Um, there is um, certain kinds of chemical exposure, radiation exposure, um, but most people, we don't know why they got it. We always want to know, any, why did I get it? And we don't know. Is there any sort of family risk or, or any regional or demographic differences that you see? Right. Um, there. Family risk is rare, and um, most most commonly there's not a family risk. And um, it, sometimes it's thought that there might be certain geographic areas or certain um, 
areas where there might be toxic exposures, but that's disputed and, and that's the minority. Most people, we really don't know why they got it. Talk, if you would, about the, the difference between leukemia and lymphomas. We, sure. As civilians, we hear about them in, in the same breath a lot. Sure. It's the same uh, research organization. What's the difference? Sure. So leukemia is a cancer of the bone marrow, and um, it presents with abnormal blood counts and manifestations of abnormal blood counts. Lymphoma is a cancer of the lymphatic system, so it uh, presents most commonly with swollen lymph nodes, um, swollen glands. Um, so they're related, but they're different diseases. and. Um, all of these diseases are, are very treatable and frequently curable, so it's very important to get the right diagnosis and the right treatment in order to get the best outcomes. Uh, let's take a phone call. Harford County, this is Bill. Uh, Bill, thank you for the call. Go ahead. Hi, doctor. I was wondering where myeloma fits into the spectrum of blood disorders and cancers. Thanks very much. Yeah, good question. So myeloma is, is another bone marrow cancer. Um, so it's different from leukemia. It arises in different kind of cells, um, but it is also a bone marrow cancer. What, what's the most exciting research going on in, in your view? Actually, there's so much of it, it's hard to... Um, so um, the molecular treatments, so identifying a mutation that causes abnormal signaling and uh, developing uh, molecules that inhibit that signaling is really exciting. Um, and, and there have um, been increasing successes, the first one being Gleevec, and then on from there. Um, but also immunotherapies, so um, new approaches to harnessing the immune system um, to treat leukemias and other cancers is a really hot area and um, a lot of exciting uh, progress in that area. If uh, frequently these are not immediately obvious to someone that they're developing this condition and you said it can be picked up incidentally. Uh, what, what should someone do in, in terms of uh, being, being aware of changes to their body and, and uh, you know, what, what's your first line of defense? Sure. So the, if there are symptoms, um, and certainly in acute leukemia there usually are symptoms, um, fatigue, um, low-grade fever or recurrent infections, bleeding, bruising, if, if somebody's got those symptoms, they should be evaluated, they should seek medical attention. And, and maybe what's the role for a tertiary care medical center like yours in the treatment of these conditions? So if somebody probably starts out at the primary care physician, where, where should they go after that? So from the primary care physician, they'll be referred to a hematologist or an oncologist. Um, and for acute leukemia, they usually are just referred to the tertiary center because it's often a hospital admission. and. Um, tertiary centers see a lot of acute leukemia, whereas a community hospital just see a few patients. And um, also, uh, one of the treatments for leukemias is bone marrow transplant, and that's certainly done at a tertiary center. Uh, so they're very good hematologists, oncologists in the community, and they, in certain circumstances, will just treat patients. Other times, send them for an opinion, but then we send them back to be treated. But sometimes they come to us and we, we treat them. Very good. Dr. Maria Baer with the uh, University of Maryland, University of Maryland Medical Center. Doctor, thank you for being with us. Thank you very much. Do appreciate it. Your health segments are a co-production of Maryland Public Television and the University of Maryland Medical System. 